everything from gas cans to Nomex pants, fire pants, oh, yeah. to shirts, okay. tents, anything that we would need to support this fire is going to be in here. How many people do you expect to be living like we're staying at least a thousand? Unknown at this point. We were at five hundred. I think that's 40 right there. Yeah. So look at that. We need 25 in inch bolts. There's three right there. 38. <laughs> One more box. <laughs> One more? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to another spike camp. Juniper spike camp. What is that? It's another firefighter. There's only nine boxes. Well, we are missing one more box. Is there any more boxes over there? Oh. These ones stay on the side? Oh. Yeah. Hey, hang, hang on that. I need to count that before we put it. Function out of here yeah. because we need uh, internet and phone coverage. Right, right. Well, definitely. Yeah. Sure. Okay, Karen, can mm -hmm. you just, uh, what's your title again on this? Karen Takai, uh, T-A-K-A-I, Fire Information Lead for um, Joe Reinhardt's Type 1 team. Okay, and would that, would you be the spokesperson for the Los Conscious Fire? Right, okay. on, the, on the north end, uh, uh, Zone 1. Okay, so tell us really quick what's going on here. A lot of setup taking place. Uh, yeah, we have a lot of crews coming in and we need uh, facilities to support those crews and the function of fire. So what you're seeing here is, is what we do to support uh, a thousand people um, responding to fire in a wilderness area. Is this where most of the firefighters will be uh, arriving to take hot showers to eat a hot meal? Yeah, this is where they want to be. We do have our showers. We have mess tents that will feed up to 500 easy in a seating and uh, go through two or three hours of people just filtering through eating and showers to handle that many people too. I know that this is just kind of, um, you guys are just now setting up, so this is not what the tent city is going to look like maybe at the end of the week, but tell me like what, what type of support and resources do you have arriving here to make sure that this is as comfortable for the firefighters as can be? Well, what you'll have is, um, again, supplies are behind us right now, and that will give them anywhere from cots, tents, sleeping bags, mats, um, Nomex, fire uh, resistant shirts and pants, um, food, showering facilities. Um, there's a lot that goes on to keep approximately a thousand people, which it has the potential to grow to, to keep them safe, happy, and uh, comfortable. And this is all paid for federal federal money, correct? Yeah, this is, this is your uh, fire fund money at work to get uh, to um, help suppress, I guess now, close to 70,000 acre fire in this area. Now, tell me about this crew right here. They're packing up stuff and they're going to deliver it to another spy camp. For those that don't know what spy camps are, give a us a spy little... camp is a camp located outside of your main camp that might be a little bit more inaccessible, um, might take a long time to get there or you might have to fly things into. So we have to get those spike camps. They might have 25, maybe 50 people in your spike camp but we need to supply them with food and supplies, make sure that they're able to function at their highest capacity out there fighting the fire. Okay, anything else you want to add? Um, it is quite an incredible journey when you see areas like this grow in four days to you know, one tent and to be able to supply comfort to a thousand people is quite phenomenal. Talk about the uh, catering. Let me grab a quick shot of it. I see a bunch of tents around. Well, they actually have sort of 
barracks? I don't know. Is that what no, they'll, they'll, mainly they'll be sleeping in tents. A lot of them just sleep out in the open. But when you're setting up a, a city for a thousand, uh, safety is probably one of their biggest concerns and traffic flow to make sure that everything's going in the right direction and making sure sleeping quarters are off in certain areas away from all the activity is of the heavy machinery that's going around. So you'll see just the tents in one side and you'll see eating facilities in other areas, showering facilities in yet other areas. How important is uh, this for firefighters to have a place to come and eat and sleep? Uh, when you have 16 hour days and, and you're pushing a shovel and a Pulaski and you're walking and you have 45 pound packs on your back, this is home. I mean, once you're here, you're just hitting the ground and you're sleeping. Okay, and what about uh, meals and stuff? Who caters that and what can we expect them to be eating? Or? Uh, national caterers, there are many different caterers across the nation who actually uh, do come to these events and they supply our food. And they have uh, 4,000 calorie meals during the day to make sure that they're keeping up with the needs of the firefighters out on the line. And what you'll see are the companies supply anything from uh, steak and shrimp to uh, sausages and hot dogs. I mean, it goes the gamut uh, during the day. It's a regular breakfast in the morning, a hot meal during the evening, and a brown bag lunch for uh, lunch, two sandwiches and assorted snacks. So this is where you want to eat. You don't want to have to eat the, uh, the MREs. It, you know, if, if you are in a spike camp situation, the chances are you're going to be eating a lot of MREs. If we can't get meals out to you in hot cans, um, if for some reason it's a a helicopter that's bringing your food back and forth through those uh, hot containers and the winds come up. You're stuck the night, you're eating MREs. Okay, great. Do, they, do you guys rotate out for those camps versus this camp? Or how's that oh, happen? yeah, okay. So when you're in a spike camp, you might be up there a few days and then they'll rotate them out, bring them down, get them showered, get them well fed and rested. Another crew goes up, replaces them, and they go through a rotation uh, working that area. From San Domingo Pueblo, this is a camp crew. What's your name? I'm Amber. Steve. Nice to meet you, Steve. Thank you for letting us. Oh, the biggest one we've ever had, right? Yeah. I'm a fire 
there too. It's amazing how many people. I, I met people from New York. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, of all the all the national stories, you know, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's just amazing how many people from other parts of the country. This one's kicking up some weird clouds. Yeah, I know. You can't really see it behind Redondo, but coming up, it was. Ventura for the Hastings Seat of Fire. Yeah, I was there. Yeah. Hastings Seat of Fire. Adrenaline, but you know, it's just scary too because you can oh, see yeah. everything burning around the campus and you're like, what is going on? And everybody. He's going to get a wide shot and then he'll come over here. So, what will you guys be doing out there? Uh, we're fire. supporting the burnout operation. Okay. Um, and so, we're just there making sure that we drive along behind them. If anything spots over into the green, that okay. we can jump on it and get it, uh, get it out before it uh, starts to grow in size okay. and take off again. Okay. And is this something a little different than any of the other fires you guys? I know you haven't been there yet, but just. All right, Mike, can you just say and spell your first and last name? Yes, my uh, first name is going to be Michael, M I C H A E L. Last name will be Hinton, H I N T O N. And you're with the U.S. Forest Service for what? Uh, yes, ma'am, Modoc National Forest. I'm on currently stationed on engine 3 4. Okay, and you're coming all the way from California. So tell us how the drive was to get down here, and you haven't even reached the fire yet. Uh, the drive was long. Um, 27 hours in the back of a Type 3 engine, um, so it got a little cramped after the hours rolled on and stuff. But uh, other than that, it was a good, safe, smooth drive here, and uh, we're just had to be happy to be here to help support the citizens of New Mexico. How many people are you with? Right now, we're on a five-man team. Five-man. Okay, so you kind of got a hiccup. Uh, something happened to your truck, and that's what you've been waiting for? Yes, ma'am. We had a mechanical failure that uh, we're currently uh, trying to get fixed so we can get out there and support the uh, fellow firefighters. And what will you be doing when you're out there at the fire? We will all be supporting a burnout operation, which consists of setting fire ahead of the main fire in order to create a buffer to stop the fire before it can do any more damage to any houses or any more uh, people. And I know this is extremely dangerous because you're ahead of the fire and it could, you know, uh, at any moment just kind of rapidly grow. Uh, any kind of, I guess, advice or what do you tell, you know, I don't know, this is just a day in your job or... Um, it's it's always dangerous out there, especially anytime you're dealing with fire. Uh, the winds can tend to shift on you, and where you think you're one minute safe, the next minute the wire, the, the wind will push the fire right back on you. Um, so you just have to really keep your head on a swivel and uh, make sure you look out for yourself and everybody else out there. And for as a firefighter, you know, being part of this wildland team, how important is it to have a camp like this? Oh, it's extremely important. Uh, without these camps, we couldn't go out there and do the jobs we do um, and try to put these fires out when they get to large-scale numbers like this. So without these camps, we couldn't do it. Because you'd rely on this camp for what? Yes, ma'am. This camp will provide us with all the food, water, um, parts for our engines, and other mechanical things we operate. And uh, it gives us a place to bed down when we don't have to be bedded down next to the fire. And I know that this camp is still um, not at its peak just yet because you've been to a lot of different fires yourself. Um, what will it look like probably in the next coming days? Uh, it'll look like organized chaos will be the best way to explain it. There'll be a lot more people here, a lot more machinery, heavy equipment moving in and out. And uh, so it just takes a little bit more essay even in camp here that a lot of things are going on, a lot of moving parts, and uh, you just need to pay attention and make sure you're safe and watch out for other people. Okay, and how long do you think you'll be working uh, this fire is like 12 hour days 15 hour days uh hopefully we can work at least 16 hours a day and uh and do what we can they allow us two weeks and then uh, we can ex uh, take two days off and come back for another two weeks so hopefully we can be here as long as uh, the people want us and uh as long as we can do our jobs got it great thank you
Oh, yes, uh, whoop. Dean McAllister, D E A N M C capital A L I S T E R. And your title, who are you? With? I'm the logistics section chief with the Southwestern team. Okay, and that's U.S. Forest Service. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, so tell us about for the next few days. A lot of uh, these firefighters and support teams, like yourself, will be basically camping. Right, uh, because you know we obviously don't have the uh, have motels available to us. We we tend to travel with our motels like this on you know in our packs. Uh, and so we're sleeping in them. Most, most firefighters will have a, a tent, a sleeping bag. Uh, we provide air mattress type or rubber pads that serve as air mattresses. I've got, I've actually have a cot in mine, uh, but I'm able to, tra I travel in my own vehicle and so I can bring a lot more stuff than your average firefighter does. Now, while this guy's doing this, can you do me a favor? Can you just hit that, uh, that zipper just? Sure. Just, well, give me one. I'm not that quick. <laughs> oh, okay. Give me one more. All right. Just leave it open. Now for a so-called fire camp tent city, uh -huh. what is it that you need? Basically just a flat surface? <clears throat> yeah, this is, this is ideal because you've got a, a layer of, of pine needles and, and, and duff, so it's, it's soft. Uh, you can actually, a lot of our firefighters, I'm sure, are just sleeping right on the, on the duff. Uh, but we're, we're, we basically, when we, we set up a fire camp, we set up a city because we provide food, we, we have a shower unit. Uh, we have sanitary facilities, uh, lots of portable toilets and that sort of thing. Uh, so it's, it's, it's everything a firefighter needs to, to, to basically survive in, in a camp. And how do you pick an area and you say, hey, this is going to be my, our, our tent? Yeah, we, we, we're, we built this camp with the, with the thought of having between 1,000 and 1,200 people. And so you need a lot of open area. We have a, a kitchen over here that, that takes about an, an acre of open ground uh, just to set their, their situation up because they've got refrigerator vans and, and dry storage trucks and then, then big tents for firefighters to eat in. They have to provide uh, seating for 200 people at one time. And so and we'll feed, you know, this morning we fed uh, around 800 people in an hour and a half. So we feed fast. And how far is this campsite or this tent or this uh, fire camp away from the actual fire? <clears throat> uh, the drive time from, this, the, from where you are here to the fire is probably between a half hour and 45 minutes minimum. And why do you guys take it so far out? Uh, well, one thing, we want to be away from the smoke. Uh, the firefighters are breathing smoke all day long, and so when they come in at night, we try to find a place that's, that's away from the, the, from the smoke pattern, and, and for the most part, this one is. Now, tonight, uh, we have about 400 of our camp population will be down at the Juniper Campground uh, over on, the, on, on Bandelier National Park, uh, and, and part of the reason for putting them over there, they'll be breathing a little bit more smoke, but they won't have the hour drive time back and forth, and so it, it gives them more rest and we provide, we're providing toilet facilities and, and food over there so they don't have to come in here. And we'll keep them over there two or three days and we'll rotate them, bring them in, send other crews over there. So this is the main camp? This is the main camp. And then you have what you call spike camps? Spike camps, which is, is, a, is a temporary type facility. And in this particular case, they're in a park service campground, uh, which is nice because there are some tables and facilities that they, we can use. But a lot of times it's just out in bare ground. <laughs> it pretty covers the basics on it. Okay. As, as, uh, one, one of the things that, uh, that we're, we're providing here is we provide potable water. 
and, and in, in, our, in this particular case, because of the, the drought situation and the, and the, the problems with water in, in, uh, on the Hamas Pueblo and the Hamas Springs, uh, we're actually sending 5,000-gallon uh, potable water trucks to Bernalillo uh, to provide our potable water. And we're going through eight to 10,000 gallons a day of potable water. Wow. So it's, it's just the support, that support aspect of this fire, just to keep our shower and our kitchen and our hand-washing facilities going is, is significant. Great, thank you, Dean. Okay, but they'll they'll pack up. The, I mean, they'll they'll put their tents or this is yeah. personal tent. Yeah. <laughs> this isn't government issue. Yeah. And and they're they're almost a you know shake them and they snap out like those those little dome silver okay. dome tents you're seeing. And you can set those things up in about a minute. Okay. This thing takes a little longer. Right. I know. Okay. Okay. Three, two. Do you want me to point this way or this way? It doesn't matter. It's okay. On both sides. Three, two. During the day when you come to base camp, you only see a few tents, but come, oh, sorry. Three, two. During the day when you come to base camp, you only see a few tents, but come nighttime, there's gonna be hundreds set up. Okay, is that cool? Yeah, you wanna do an outro or no? Or just that? that will just be for like my basic stand-up. Oh. Yeah, I guess for the five. And then, okay. and then should I do for, is it Los Conscious? How do you say it? Pronounce it. Los Conscious. Okay. Three, two. Look live intro. Okay. Three, two. I'm here at the Redondo Meadows, the main base camp for the Los Conscious fires, where Los Conscious fire. Sorry. Three, two. I'm here at Redondo Meadows where this is the main base camp for the Los Conchas fires where different fire crews from around the state and around the nation will be gathering. Okay. Okay. okay, three, two. As more firefighters arrive, this base camp will also expand. In Redondo Meadows, Amber Lee, KOAT Action 7 News.